Hey guys, what's going on? DreamReaver23 here with another Let's Play episode of Kerbal Space Program. Now, I realize I said another, and I do realize that it's been quite a while since I've had my last one out, but, you know, we're not going to dwell on things of the past. Uh, so we are playing Kerbal Space Program here. Go ahead and start this up. I am uh, wanting to show you, for this first episode, or this first episode in a while, I'm wanting to show you two planes that I've built. Uh, the first one being a small one, the second one being a much, much larger plane. Uh, this first one right here, though, I called it the Kerbal Picker Upper. Let me look for it here. Ah, there we are. Uh, so this one, I, I had made another ship that got into outer space, docked, and uh, came back down, and I needed something to go through and pick him up. And uh, so, yeah, so I made this guy because uh, it was just taking way too long with a... Uh, with a rover. Now you can see in the middle right there, there's actually... Let me take that off. There's uh, two parts in here that it has the seats just kind of attached to the side. So they are flying just outside of the plane whenever they come and you go to pick them up. Uh, the reason for that is just because this is only a two-seater plane and uh, I wasn't able to keep the design to add more crew space or whatever for him, so I just added that right in there. Now this isn't a perfect flying plane, like it, it is a little uh, heavy on the rear and there's some things that can be done with it, but it flies really great. You will also notice that this is a VTOL, a vertical takeoff landing vehicle. Uh, the things, the engines on the side, <clears throat> on the four, uh, the four engines on the outside of the plane, um, they are for vertical takeoff and landing, and it's a pretty sweet mod. I'll try to get that added in there. Uh, but giving you an overview of the the plane itself, I'm actually... Let me go through here, and I'm going to speed up time just because I want it to be daytime. It's always nicer. <clears throat> <laughs> Waiting for the sunrise. <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still fighting this like shit in my chest from uh, just allergies. I have big huge cottonwood trees outside my house and they, they just kill me. Now one thing that we do have installed on here, this is a lot of it's part of the B9 aerospace system, but I do have the lasers uh, system installed on here as well. And this is more, I, I, I saw that it had stuff for a fly-by-wire like you could actually uh, use it. And, and some people were saying in the comments that it works a lot better than the SAS system. So wanted to check that out. Um, but first, I am going to take all of the stuff off to show you how the plane flies and everything like that without using it. And typically in this situation, I use it for really long flights. Um, that way I don't have to control it that well. So I start up the engine, and then I actually have it set up through the action groups to where I can take off the jet turbines and just use the VTOLs. Uh, switch with the action groups to number three to uh, turn the VTOLs in. You just saw those turn in. And then adjust it up. A little bit more, get some lift, get some forward momentum just because it makes it a little bit easier. Turn on the uh, regular afterburners, the jet engines on there. And then right here I'm going to adjust the VTOLs to where they're going forward since I have, you know, I'm in the air. And it takes off. It's a really smooth flying system, and even like at low speeds, like it's pretty much like a glider, which is pretty nice. I, I, I do it. So as you can see from the overview, I mean, this is a uh, sharp looking plane. I do like the style of it. It looks, I don't know, pretty sweet. Uh, it still does make me laugh that they just kind of chill in on the side whenever you go to pick them up. But it does work. I did do the rescue mission, and it worked out nicely. Now, one thing, I'm going to turn on the uh, the laser's uh, guided flight system here. And you can see it's going to drop. Just that's because I uh, when it, it was set for 1,000, and I was already above 1,000, so it's going to go and drop down. But adjusting that out, we'll adjust it out to 10,000. And uh, pulled in our gear as well. Alright, go ahead and speed up time a little bit so we can get through a lot more of this. 
Um, just doing some aerobatics. I turned off the uh, pitch roll and everything like that. Turned off the laser system. Uh, you can see that it does kind of have a little bit of a wobble in there, and I think it's just from the... I, I probably should take out... I have on there, I have one of the little um, torque controllers or whatever, basically, the one of the SASs. <clears throat> so, but what we're going to do here is we're going to end up here in just a second. I don't know how long I take. But we're going to end up turning it around and going back for a landing, and I might just skip ahead to that. All right, guys, so coming back in for the landing, I uh, did turn back on the afterburners just so I can get a little bit more speed under my belts, I guess, if you will. So once again, it, it's it's a pretty smooth flying. Like, it's, it's great for longer flights. Um, obviously, with this one, you want to keep it at about 10,000 meters uh, above sea level. That's going to go through and kind of be its optimal flying range. It's between 8,000 and 10,000. You're going to have it, and the, the cool thing about it is literally this thing lasts forever on fuel. If you look through most of the parts right now, I think it's at, uh, <laughs> wow, that was random. I can't actually see 0.17 liters of fuel uh, per second, I guess it is. Uh, usually at, at full power, and that's that's going through with all of the afterburners, all of the VTOLs working and everything like that. Um, whenever you're flying with just the jet engines, because uh, if you're not using the laser system, you can fly this with just the ASCS. It's wobbly, and whenever you turn on the VTOLs, it gets, like, really jumpy. So it is a pretty sweet system, though. And then uh, whenever you're doing that, though, you, you'll just be using like 0.02 liters of fuel per second. Literally, I flew the other day for about an hour and a half, two hours, and I had only used something like, I don't know, 60. No, it was, it was only, it was about 8 or 9% of the fuel in the plane. And it's still pretty balanced through it. Now, see here, I'm coming down lower into the ground, <coughs> towards the ground, I should say. And drop the landing gear and adjust the VTOLs and then I will turn off the uh, jet engines here in just a second. Actually no with this one I just kept them on and did a smooth landing. Except for the fact that I couldn't find the runway and yeah I, I didn't remember where the runway was whenever I left. But turn the, the fuel or the uh, thrust all the way down. And yeah, just overall a really, really nice flight. Now you see here, I've actually seen that's where the, uh, the airport is, the uh, space station. So I'm going to go ahead and take off again. Show you the takeoff on here. Front still just staying on the ground and more thrust lift up. Gorgeous. Oh, it's gorgeous. I love that takeoff. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, no, it's it's a really clean system, and I think with most of this, I just I, I if I remember correctly, I do just use a lot more of the VTOLs on this one. Eventually I do turn on the jets, but that's just to get more forward momentum there. Because right now, I mean, the VTOLs, you can go through, and I guess you can cycle the angles uh, if you go through and kind of mess with the configs a little bit. But I just have it to where it's pretty much 90-90s. Uh, it goes straight or it goes, you know, 90 degrees. You can actually turn them and in, invert them if you go through the, uh, if you right-click on them or you set it up in the action groups. And that just allows you to go through and have it to where you can have them to where they face completely up. But they're never going to face opposite direction of, you know, the forward momentum. You're not going to be able to reverse them. <clears throat> so... All right, so sped it up a little bit so we can get through the flight a little bit quicker. Um, adjusted the VTOLs there so that it's just forward momentum, brought in the landing gear, and literally you can see right over here in the bottom left the pitch and everything like that, pitch and yaw. I'm adjusting the yaw, but that's all I'm doing. This thing flies pretty well and straight at low altitudes, which is nice. A little bit higher there, so we're not running into the ground. 
but it doesn't have the fastest speed. You know, you're running through it about 168, uh, 169 uh, meters per second on most parts whenever you're going up to full, and that's with all of the engines going in forward thrust. So it's not the fastest. You're not gonna. This isn't gonna be you know some breaking speed record to go through and get this on there. Uh, but it does get you around, and it will get you around rather safely. Literally, you can go through and you know let go of the of the handle or you know the controls if you're using just a keyboard. But there you can see kind of like a little bit of that wobble in the wings. If any of you have suggestions on how to go through and take a lot of that wobble out, hey, I'm down. Let me know. I'm thinking about moving the uh, the elevators uh, on the back wings back there and moving those closer in towards the uh, to where all the really all the mass is, and I think that might do something to adjust. But I haven't looked at that yet. I haven't changed that yet. Go ahead and drop that down. We're gonna take off our jets and turn our VTOLs down. And see, it's just it's just adjusting the throttle. Now it does work out nicely. I do have the uh, Logitech Extreme 3D Pro uh, joystick that I've actually had for probably about eight or nine years, and it does work out really nicely. It's it's a nice joystick to have to control the planes. Getting it set up in there in Kerbal isn't that bad either. So, so where the last landing was with the jet engines and the VTOL. This one is just VTOL, so you can kind of see that. And when adjusting it this way, this one, it kind of works uh, like a helicopter. If you've ever played a flight simulator and you've, if you've never used a VTOL in a flight simulator, uh, you have to kind of angle back to slow your speed if you're just using the vertical takeoff because that's providing your momentum is what you came in from before. So hear me, see me here in just a second. I start to angle it back, and that's going to go through it. And I'll actually raise the speed, raise the thrust, but I pull the handle back. And that's going to make it to where I slow down a bit more. So just trying to slow the speed, slow the speed. And then come in for a nice smooth landing. Apply the brakes. Landing complete. So there is the uh, Kerbal Picker Upper. That's the first one right there. And it, I, I don't I don't know. I really enjoy it. Now, I know some of you are going to ask, hey, what are those white things? It's actually called Quantum Struts. It's uh, on Kerbal Spaceport, and you'll see a lot of them here in the next flight. Uh, now, this next one coming up is a huge, huge plane. <laughs> huge. Uh, this is my BAFJ, or big-ass freaking jet. Freaking wasn't the original word, but a big ass freaking jet. And this is gargantuan. Using a lot of the B9 uh, aerospace things, it's huge. All right, those are Saber M. If you if you have the B9 aerospace pack, those are the Saber M engines. Um, huge wings. It's actually got double heads, so you can actually have four Kerbals in here. It took. Probably about three or four hours to build to get it to where it was flight worthy, but it's giant. It's actually so big that I typically run terrible frame rate whenever I am going on here. Uh, the other one I was recording, I was getting 60 frames a second, no problem. This one I was getting anywhere between 10 and 14 with recording just because it is so big. It's actually so big that I can't take off in this thing by myself. I have to use the laser system or else it just it goes to hell. And I don't even have enough runway for it. Uh, some people are like, you need to put more engines on there. There's already, I think there's nine engines on this thing already. I can't fit anymore and be able to keep it to where it's flight worthy. Basically, the more weight I add, the harder it is just to pull this thing off the ground and keep it together. But yeah, there you can see all nine engines on the back. These things each put out 640 kilonewtons of thrust. They're huge. So we did set it up, and we have it set up for 10,000, um, the altimeter, 10,000 meters, and we have everything set. I also adjusted the fly towards bearing to 90 degrees, or, yeah, a 90 degrees bearing. That's lined up perfectly straight with the runway, and so that's just so it kind of keeps its own self 
on the runway. It's ridiculously hard to fly. And uh, so, yeah, taking off, it has to get up. I think it's got to get up to right around 128, 129 uh, meters per second to be able to reach optimal lift efficiency. <laughs> this thing is a behemoth. I was going to call it the Albatross just because this thing is huge. Oh, this thing's so big. Yeah, it actually goes off the runway. There's not enough things on the runway. And you'll see right here, I just lost my elevator on the uh, far side. Which, it doesn't affect the flight too much, luckily. <laughs> I'm running <laughs> one less on the right there. But it is a huge, huge airplane. This thing guzzles the fuel too. I think it's putting out like five or six uh, liters of fuel a second. <laughs> I gotta say this, I think this is probably one of the biggest planes that I've seen take off in any Kerbal videos that I've looked at. Like you see a, some of them and they're, they're, they're pretty big, but they're pretty big single fuselage planes. This is a double fuselage plane. This has two basically full planes on it. Uh, switching to the inside, this is a cockpit that I, I love the, uh, I think it's called the IVA, no, I can't remember what they called it, but it's just the IVA computers, and uh, so you can go inside and view, but it's it's actually got flight systems, flight controls, fuel information, everything on the computers in there, I think it's so freaking awesome, but you can see the climb rate, um, I don't know. It's a freak little freak a freaking sweet little system in my opinion. I do enjoy that quite a bit. So yeah, this is my big monster behemoth of a plane right here. And it does climb really well. Uh, the problem that you have on here is that if you're not going up, you're crashing which I'll demonstrate here in just a second. Uh, as you can see on there, there are a lot of the air intakes. This thing requires a lot of air. Um, so I have, for the engines, the Saber M engines, I have the air intake for them, and then the pre-cooler, and then the engine itself. But then also, all along the way, I have tons and tons of air intakes to go through and just get air into all of these engines. Quite big, quite big. I don't know. I enjoy it, though. It's a fun plane to uh, try to see to take off. It took forever just to get it, figure out how to get it to take off, just because I, I was like, ah, and I was, at first I was giving up when it was running off the runway, and then I started giving up, you know, obviously when it was in the water. Uh, so I just adjusted the flight to go through and have any little bit of downward, you know, movement, and like I said, if it's not moving up, it's going down, and it just goes into an uncontrollable spin of death and you'll lose it. It's kind of fun though at about 10,000 feet because of the, you're going at a much higher speed. It tears apart and then chunks of the plane are just flying off and they, I've had uh, one of them. I wish I was recording at the time but the <clears throat> two parts of the plane kind of split apart from each other and we're just flying not straight. They were falling like this, but they were just falling and they just like kept smacking into each other. And then those, they had one big collide where everything kind of blew apart and everything like that. I don't know. It was ridiculous. But yeah, that's the, uh, the plummeting fail of this giant, huge plane. Biggest one that I've seen. It's huge. I think it's like 200, 289 or 299 megagrams. I can't remember right off hand. But a giant, giant plane dead now. And those are actually the quantum struts that just kind of get stuck in the air. So, yeah. That's my two big planes that I wanted to show you guys. Um, if you have a plane that's bigger than that or just a huge plane that you've been able to fully take off, fly, and land... Let me know. I want to see. I want to see. You know, especially if it's something built out of vanilla. I can't build planes for crap in vanilla. I might be able to now, but I, I have too much more fun with the uh, the mods on here. I will try to get all of the mods that I used in the description. I know that this one is like B9 Aerospace mod. The VTOLs, I can't remember which one that's off of. Actually, I think that one might be off of B9 as well. 
Uh, the Quantum Core, the Quantum Struts, that you can find on Kerbal Spaceport if you just type in Quantum Struts or just look for it on there. It does really nice. You have a Quantum Core that you have to apply to it, and then the Quantum Struts just work. Um, they do take an electrical charge for them to work, but they, I, I do enjoy them. They do work nicely. So, yeah. That's going to be it for this episode, guys. Make sure you leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Um... Let me know that you like these series. I'll, I'll keep doing more. Literally, Kerbal has been taking over my life the past few days. And that's why I haven't gotten really any other videos up. Is just because I've been spending so much time playing Kerbal Space Program. I do enjoy it. So, I hope that you guys join me next time. If you got some crazy builds that you've built, send me a message. Send me a, you know, a message on YouTube. Sending me a link to your video. I want to see these builds. And, uh, hey, you know what? If we go through and if I like them, if you, want, if, you, if you don't mind, I'll go through and show them here on the channel. I think that'd be pretty sweet. But uh, I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to get started working on some more Kerbal Space Program and see if I can get... I want to set up a whole moon base. But until next time, guys, I'm DreamReaver23 saying game happy, and I will see you all later. Bye, guys.